Brother Terry asked me what the title of my lesson was going to be today, and I really didn't know until I read it right at the last, and <clears throat> hopefully it will fit in with what I got. Uh, so the main thing I want to talk about this morning is about depression. Depression. Do we get depressed from time to time? It doesn't matter who you are, how rich you are, how poor you are, how smart you are, or how educated in the God's Word or whatever. Many times, we that are born of the Spirit of God, God's children, we get depressed. We get down. We get low. Uh, I wrote a little survey that I took off the computer years ago, and it fits in with this. It, it says that 17 million people a year, this was probably four or five years ago that I got this information from, that I've had back, uh, I've gotten before. 17 million people a year miss work because of depression. Can you imagine that? They have, uh, you know, there's a lot of places we work that, uh, and it's a, every day it's a, it's a battle to go to work. I mean, I used to work for U.S. Plywood when I first got out of the Navy, and I was, I was, had tender hands. I didn't do too much you know, heavy work back then. And I come out of the Navy, and I was fixing to get married. Well, I was going to find a job, and I, I hired on the U.S. Plywood. I mean, they hired me quick, and I thought, well, I'm special, you know. That, that quick? And I got on that, they had, what, they had a machine that comes down with four by eight sheets of plywood, and I had to grade that plywood coming off that machine. They said, don't never stop this thing unless it's an emergency. Well, I worked there four days, and I went over there the fifth day, and I punched the button and shut her down. And, uh, they come out of the office, and the office is upstairs. They come out of the office, what the world's going on? I said, I quit. I will not work here no more. And I made a praise to them. I said, I can make more money in a football than I can working here. And with which was true. At that time, I think I made $50. I wound up with $42 of it. But I was depressed. I was on a job, and I was thankful for a job. But thank God that he led me on to the railroad and I did make a fairly decent wages over the years and I've been blessed. But we go through some times in our life and I knew I, was, I couldn't do that forever. And, uh, and even though I was young and, and, and strong and everything, but I got depressed. I, I decided I just don't want to do nothing. And I did. But 17 million people a year miss work because of the press state. Uh, and then what's going to happen to your productivity? It's going to go down when all this happens. But I always think about our TVs and all these. We see things on TV and newspapers, all about ISIS, all about this, all about that, and here with this, and Trump done that, and all that. And we get depressed. We get down, don't we? And we should. So these are the down things. We need to be thinking about something special, and that's Jesus. Jesus is special. And if Jesus is with you, you won't be depressed. You won't be bound. But even what, even though I said that, many people in the Bible have gotten depressed. Can you name some? Anybody? Sure you can name somebody. Alright, David. Let's take David for example. Why why was David down? He, he made a statement over in Psalm 42 of it was, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why did I disquiet in me? Why was David depressed? Why was he down? Why was he crying to the Lord there? Because what? He sinned. He had committed adultery. And then one thing led to another. Once you start doing things wrong, the Bible says a little leaven leaveth the whole lump. In other words, a little bit gets it's kind of like a cancer. It, it, it'll grow a little bit and then it gets a spread and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. With David, that's what happened to David's life. And that's why he was crying to God, Lord, why am I cast down for my soul? He had committed adultery and committing adultery led to being a murderer. And David was a murderer. 
he had Uriah the Hittite killed because so David is a good example that we can look at that was very much depressed but he knew that God could help him and that's why he was doing he was crying unto the Lord Lord help me my soul is cast down turn to uh, Psalm 73 if you would here again in Psalm 73 <clears throat> this is talking about somebody that got really down and really This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, this, this whole chapter 73, but uh, I've told you before, when I read this and I was convicted in my heart when I read this because it was just as plain as day that it was pointing all of it back to me, what I was reading. I was trying to do right, I was trying to study, I was trying to go to church, I was trying to get my life together. <clears throat> and then I read Psalm 73 and I just cried like a baby sitting on the steps going down in my den. There wasn't nobody there but me. But God convicted me at that point. And listen to what it says. It says in Psalm 73, Truly God is good to Israel. Is God, was God good to Israel? Absolutely. Truly God is good to Israel, even such as a clean heart. But as for me, this is what he said now. This is Asaph writing this. He said, God's good to Israel. It, verse 2 says, But as for me, my feet were almost gone, and my steps were well nigh split. Was he getting depressed here? Was he holding up? Or was he ready to quit? Was he at the end of the rope, so to speak? Yes, he was. He says, For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Have you ever envied somebody? You wanted what they had or what they going to be doing or whatever? And that's why he he was he had a clean heart, he said. And and ASAP was saying, I was envious at these wicked people. And and the more they touched, the more listen that for I was envious at foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither they plague like other men. Have you ever gotten in trouble and wonder why in the world somebody else was more uh, uh, wicked than you are? They didn't just go scot free. Well, that's the way it is when you are being tried by God. They sat with being tried here. And all these things, he could see all these things, and he was crying to God, Look, Lord, I'm I'm in trouble. These people are wicked and they prosper and I can't make a nickel. And everything they do is cut them to go. As for me, I was envious and foolish and saw the prosperity of the wicked. Verse 7 says, Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart to wish. These wicked people have everything they want. I've been striving for a Harley Davidson all my life. Never got it yet, and I'm not going to ever get one probably because of the problems I have now. Uh, my health problems now, I can't. Pretty well, I'd be foolish to go out and buy twenty, thirty thousand dollars Harley Davidson now because I can't even ride the one I got at home now. But you see how God worked. I always wanted this and this and this. But God took, didn't give me some of these things, and I can't blame God for that. It's my See, I was wanting, I was envious. I was wanting something somebody else had. I was envious. It. Their eyes stand out the fact that they have more than heart to They are corrupt. They speak wicked. Concerning oppressions, they speak lawfully. They set their mouth against the heavens, their tongue through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither, and the waters are full, and run out to them, and they say, How does God know? You ever seen anybody say, Well, how does your God know if this and that know? You got to be ready to tell people how God knows. And they ask that question, how does your God know? There's no knowledge no time. Behold, this is verse 12 now. These that are doing all these wickedness, those that are having all this good things that happen to them and all that. It says verse 12 says, Behold, these are the what? The ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. He says, Verily I've cleansed my heart in vain, and my hands 
my wife washed my hands in the innocent for all day long. I've been plagued and chastened every morning. And he goes on to tell me, he says, until I went to the sanctuary. Where's the sanctuary at? The church. That's the church. That's the bottom line. When you get down and you see the wicked prospering, when you get down and you envious of what they have, and you get down and you get down and you get down, but God will lift you up if you look to Him and cleanse your heart. Every one of us have a new heart. You know that? You got a natural heart. You got a new heart when you're born with the Spirit of God. But you you may have the heart looking good on the outside. But we need, He said on us here that we need to cleanse our heart. Now, how do you cleanse your heart? Think on things of the Lord. Be with the Lord in prayer and singing of songs and praying, visiting and all that. This gives you a clean heart. You don't have time to be thinking about the other things. So, I thought about, <clears throat> before I go to another character, I want you to think about this. Turn back up to uh, 1 Kings chapter 20. And this kind of ties in. I was reading this this morning, and, and it kind of ties in uh, with what I'm saying about being depressed. Sometimes we just, we see God's power and then all of a sudden we don't see nothing. All right. Here, given that, I'll just kind of paraphrase the first, but I want you to read first, I uh, want you to read first Kings chapter 20, verse 28, what I'm getting to, but prior to this, Benadad was a king of Syria and he had gathered all his coats together. There were 30 and two kings with him and horses and chariots and went up to besiege Samaria and warred against it. Now, as he went there and did these things, Benadad, this wicked man, now Ahab was the king of Israel this time. And Israel and, and Samaria and Israel and uh, Syria had warred all the time. They were warring all the time. Well, Benadad went in there over to Ahab, that king, and I'm not trying to get too deep here. I want to read all this. Just going to paraphrase what happened. Benadad, the king, he took 30 and two different people host with him and he went into Samaria, uh, Israel and he said, I want your gold, I want your silver, I want your wives, I want all these things or we're going to keep. And the king, Ahab, gave them up just that quick. Well, he, that, the, the story reads on, if you read it, you'll see that they come back again. He said, okay, we want more. We don't just want your silver and gold and, and your wives and your children. We want more. We want to go into your houses and get what we want now, even further. And they stood up against them. And they, they, they at least 32 different people, hosts that he had with him, they had gods. They had little gods. And each one of them would serve their own god in their own way. But it wasn't the true living god. The true living god was of Israel. And he said he's the God of the field. But that's what this king uh, come back and told him. He said, uh, all right, we know you, your God is the king of the hills. He's not the king of the valley. Well, God, man of God, went to him and told him, he said, God said to do this. You stand up against him. Well, he did. 27,000, I believe it was, a climb on a mountain or a hill, and a whole hill fell on him. Until 27,000. And then God took care of it. But the main point was in that 28th verse. I want you to listen now. 28th verse of First Kings chapter 20. And you tell me that we have a God, don't have a God of, of heaven and earth. It says that it came, and there came a man of God and spake to the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, Now the king of Israel has over Syria. Syria. But the Syrian said, The Lord God of the hills, but he's not the God of the valleys. Therefore I will really de deliver all these great multitudes in thine hand, and you shall know I am the Lord thy God. But God is the He is over the hills, and God is over the valleys. Are we as God's children going to have times in the valley? Yes, we are. We're going to have times. Of being in the valley. We're not going to have a smooth sailing as most people say that Christians should be having. 
you're going to have trouble with depression. And when you get in a depressed state, God is not only the God of the healed, but He's also in the times of your trouble. He's right there. The Bible says He will ne- in Hebrews 13, 5, I think it says, He will never leave you nor forsake you. Psalm 23, it says, When you go through the shadow of death, the valley of death, I will fear no evil. He's right there with us every moment. God will not leave you. He will not forsake you. And there's times that we're going to be down and low in the battle. Say that, now going back to some different ones that, that did. <clears throat> Elijah himself in that 19th chapter of Kings, did he get depressed? Now, this man, he was, he was out there and, and uh, he, as uh, King, it, uh, yeah, who he was? Oh, King Elijah said Elijah. King Elijah. Elijah was out there and he had saw the power of God. He stood up against uh, idolatry. And he, and he saw, he called fire come down from heaven and God did that. And he seen the power of God, didn't he? And just one or two more pages over, you'll find out that he runs and hides from a woman named Jezebel. And basically he said, kill me, take my life. Why? Because he had seen the power of God, and now the devil was working in his life, and he starts getting low, low in depression. He was getting depressed. And the Lord sent an angel. And the Lord was there with him. And the Lord told him what to do. And he did. And over and over, the Bible, Bible is full. One of the greatest generals in the army was Moses, wasn't he? He led all them out of Egyptian bondage. And even Moses said, I can't take it no more. All these people are whining and complaining. They want leeks and onions. And they said there's no graves in Egypt. And they... And all that was a bunch of lies the devil was putting on. And Moses got down. He, and he said, Lord, take my life. I'm ready to die. Job, a man of God, a man of faith. Job, if you read Job, everything, Job was perfect and upright. Feared God, he chewed evil, he shunned evil. But between him having great love for God here and being blessed at the end, in between them two, uh, Job said, "Curse, uh, curse the day he was born," and he said he was basically being brought down. He was depressed because of all these things. Can we get depressed? Absolutely. Our heart, our heart to be depression can set in on our heart. So listen to these folks here. Psalm 38, verse 8 says, I am feeble and sore broken. Do we get feeble and sore broken? Absolutely. I have roared by reason and the quietness of my heart. Psalm 143, 4 says, Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. Psalm 137, weep when they were weeping while in, in captivity. This is whenever. In Psalm 127, it says, uh, 137, it says that the children of Israel, they asked them to sing a song. They were in Babylonian fruit. They told them to sing a song, and they said, we can't sing. We don't feel like singing. You ever feel like not singing, not attending church? Sometimes we get just overwhelmed, and we are, we are so depressed, and they told them to hang, they said, we just hang our hearts upon the willow tree. They were they not going to sing. I, I felt like hanging up my heart on the willow tree many times. Things are just not going like I want to. Our country is falling apart. Our churches are, are falling apart. Do we have any reason to be depressed? No, not really. God's still blessing us every day. And sometimes we just don't see the blessings that God gives us. We need to be think about the blessings instead of being stressed. 
the stressing part causes anxiety. And anxiety will bring you down and you will be <laughs> distressed. Sickness, trouble, we go out, there's no hope. But thank God, he's still right there with us and he doesn't believe us or forsake us. A couple more verses I want you to listen to and then we'll close. Psalm 34, 17 says, The righteous cry, that's God's people, and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all their trouble, or all their distress, depressed times. First Peter 5, 6, we've used this scripture many times teaching here. It says, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he may exalt you in time, in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Does God care for you? He does. We can care, and notice that little word of all that. Humble yourself, therefore, in the mind of him, God, and he exalts you in all time, casting all, not part, but everything that you is bothered, you carry it to your and be with it. First Peter 4 12 13, you know, we as, we as God's people, we're going to suffer persecution. And we're going to go through some trying times in our lives. It says, Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is the trial. Those things will bring you down, won't they? The trying things. Try you as though some strange thing has happened to you, but rejoice. What did he say? Rejoice. Well, if you're rejoicing, you're not going to be depressed. If you're singing, you're thinking about Jesus, you're not going to be depressed. But he says here, these strange things are coming, these fiery trials are coming. And they're going to try, the devil's going to try to depress you every way he can. But rejoice and must be the partakers of Christ's suffering. That when in his glory you shall be revealed, you may be, all, you may be glad with exceeding joy. Not just joy, but abundance of joy. We need to look, look at God's word when we get down. Over at Philippians 4 8, I believe it says, <coughs> Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things so forth and so on, think on these things. If your mind is right and your heart is clean and it's right, you won't have no room to be depressed. None whatsoever. But we do, we still get depressed. I don't care who you are, like I said to start with, if you're rich, poor, young or old. Times are going to be depressing for you. Brother David right now, I'm sure, is going to go through some times of depression. He is brought low physically. And, and, and he's very weak. And that's when the devil will try to attack you. Uh, but I believe that God, that David has enough faith in God that he'll come out of that. But he won't stay there alone. He's too faithful. Job didn't stay there alone. So I pray the Lord bless us to, when we get in prayer to look to Him as the author and finisher of our faith. Anybody got anything? I, I know it was kind of rambling. It wasn't nothing like I want to teach it. Trust me, I, I want to go a different route. But uh, I felt like that's what the Lord wanted me to say that I did. We're going to get in prayer. But where are we going to lose in prayer?